Alrighty, everybody. Hello. So let's go ahead and get started with who is uh, who. Is, and we will, uh, other people can join as they see fit. Uh, thanks a lot for joining tonight. Uh, I hope I'm able to answer all questions uh, that you guys need uh, in the future uh, for, for doing this stuff. Uh, real quick, uh, I'll start with uh, my background and experience. 30 years in the audio industry. Um, as a small kid, I uh, started playing my dad's hi-fi and record players and 8-tracks uh, as a kid. And that is the beginning of all of this, really. Let's figure that stuff out. Uh, I also had a neighbor who was in a band who would uh, teach me how to use the PA system that his band used. So, get right out of frame. And so that was the beginning of it. Uh, throughout high school, uh, doing uh, community theater and in my own high school theater, we did a lot of audio, sound, theater, TV, and stuff like that. Um, I've been doing live sound for bands and theater, uh, in addition to working uh, in the radio industry and for a bunch of TV stations. I ended up going to college uh, where I graduated with degrees in radio production, television production, and broadcast journalism. Uh, and throughout my years, I've recorded live performances for many comedians uh, for their own comedy albums, but also uh, bands like Cheryl Crow, All Time Low, and a whole bunch more. Um, over the years, I've worked for iHeartRadio, iHeartMedia. I worked for them for 15 years, and then I went freelance August 15, where I worked uh, doing tape syncs and other recordings uh, for companies like SiriusXM, NPR, Gimlet, BBC, Earwolf, who, by the way, takes forever to pay you. So if you ever do work for them, be prepared to not get paid for a while. Um, and of course, uh, I've done things for Inver Boston here in Boston and uh, recorded do live sound and record. Um, live podcast for Last Boston. Uh, all right, now the important stuff: uh, gear and equipment. Uh, we'll start with that because uh, that is a lot of questions that people ask. And the one question that I always get asked when we're talking about gear is, "What is the best microphone? What is the best recorder?" Uh, for people who do video, what is the best, best camera? And the answer to that is whichever one you have. Um, so that's gonna uh, uh, one of the things that I'm gonna go that I'm gonna hammer hard is that a lot of the tools that I'm gonna talk about gear, equipment, software, products, and stuff like that are there to just aid you in telling the story and make telling the story a good story. Someone wants to listen to, just there to help you do that. Um, there are some things that make it easier, uh, but ultimately, at the end of the day, the story is what's going to matter. So. Um, first of all, talking when it comes to uh, in this industry, plugging your microphone into a computer, how do you do that? How do you do that? Um, there's a lot of devices out there called audio interfaces or external sound cards, basically. Is the thing. It's a USB device that you plug audio equipment into, and that allows you to plug into your computer. Um, I am not going to go for any recommendations on this. The answer to what audio interface or which external sound card should I buy, the answer is yes access to, whichever one is within your budget. They all pretty much do the same. Some are a little heavier on software end and downloading drivers and stuff like that. But get the one that is available to you because there's not, uh, there's very little point into putting a lot of money into these devices because predominantly they all pretty much do the same thing. Um, get the one that works best with whatever equipment you already have or whatever equipment you expect to buy. Um, USB microphones, I am not a fan of them. I think they are overall some of the worst microphones in the world, but they are convenient and they work. Um, again, I'm not going to go equipment recommendation that they all go between around $50 to $200. In my experience, a $50 one is not that much better sounding than a $200 one. A little bit better quality sometimes, but not a noticeable, uh, not in a, a large noticeable margin. One of the pieces of equipment that I am going to talk a lot about, because uh, I think it is, it is so imperative to this, uh, what we're going to be talking about, where you want to record somebody, or there's somebody else where they're over a phone, through Skype, video conferencing systems, um, or anything, is the iRig 2, which uh, is not really well known in the podcast audio industry. It was designed for musicians uh, to basically plug their instruments into their iPad or iPhone and record it. However, 
one of the beauties to this device is it makes a great audio interface or a great phone interface for you to be able to plug your phone into a mixer and get audio to and from your phone. Um, I'll go into a little more deeper talk about it, uh, but it's that's exactly what it's for. Connecting an iPhone, iPad to a mixer allows you to play audio out of an iDevice, and it also allows you to record into an iDevice if that is what you want to do. Um, I'm going to gush over this for just a few minutes. Um, one of the most convenient pieces of equipment that have come out over the past few years, um, or in the past year, is the Zoom Live Track L8, and they do make a 12 channel version as well. It's a little overkill, but um, long story short, this is a, it allows six microphone inputs. Um, you have XLR and quarter inch combo jacks. Um, these little inputs will accept both an XLR or a quarter inch input. Um, and it's a brilliant idea of it. Uh, it has four headphone outputs. Built in. All right, so it has a built-in mix minus. Well, what's a mix minus? Mix minus is um, the ability to be able to send audio to somebody without them hearing their own audio. And I'll explain more about that when we go on. And I think it was one of the most brilliant features of this is literally it comes with a cable. You can plug your phone right into this port right here, call somebody. And they will receive all the audio that you're sending to them without hearing themselves back in a feedback loop. So they won't be hearing themselves back at them, back at them, back at them, and stuff like that, which can be a traditional, usually a hard issue for a lot of folks. Uh, and the best thing about this thing, 400 bucks. Uh, that's super cheap for a, a multi track mixing device. This uh, is a mixer that has a built in SD card recorder. That also records into individual multi-tracks. So what does that mean? It means you plug all the microphones in and you can record on the fly in the studio wherever you need to. You can get a stereo mix down track. You can just use that. Or you can get each individual track audio where you can make adjustments to every single microphone in post. It's a beautiful device. I think for the price of it, it's amazing. I've just been using it. Uh, once or twice, uh, but I already love it. It has a bunch of other awesome features in it that are not um, really imperative to our conversation today, but I think it's a good piece of equipment. If you're out looking to buy a recorder for a home or even mobile setup, um, I can't recommend this one enough. Um, it also acts as a USB interface, which means you can plug it right into your computer and you can record right to your computer again in individual tracks. Only thing about it is it is cheaply made. It's built out of plastic, so it's not durable. Um, I'm using mine currently for mobile, but I don't do that much mobile anymore. So I'm not too worried about it. I have a nice space for it to make it last, uh, hopefully long. Uh, Zoom, Zoom, put some good uh, soldering into the components inside. Uh, but when it's this cheap, you have to be worried about it. Um, also on gear equipment, probably products a lot of you are already familiar with. Uh, these are some of the most popular out there. Um, that I'm just going to touch on. Uh, Zoom H5, H4n, the H6, uh, Tascam DR40. Um, and there's other ones. And the good thing about these things, they're small, they're portable, they're versatile. Um, they work great where you're doing an interview, or if you're recording uh, natural sounds or wild sounds, if you're out um, wanting to do, if you're if you're doing sound for, for movies as well, as a lot of these devices are great. Um, all these are usually about under 400 bucks. It depends on where you're getting them used or whatnot. But again, for the prosumer grade, these are the most popular and they work and they do well. Um, even the built-in microphones on these devices are good. I've recorded podcasts just using that and with a little bit of cleanup afterwards, uh, it sounds good. Um, and again, again, something I'm talking about is USB interface to a computer. And what that means, again, you can plug this directly right into your computer, plug your microphones right into that, and then you're off and running. You can record on your computer. So even if you have a sit-down, regular mobile, uh, or not mobile, but regular sit-down studio setup, you are able to uh, plug your microphones into your computer at home using one of these devices and record to the SD card as a backup. Um, and then one of the big issues with these is sometimes the preamps in them aren't great. So sometimes if you have strong, uh, power hungry mics, even their headphone amps, um, on most of these devices, the headphone amp, if you have, uh, headphones that usually require more than, I think, 120 ohms, uh, um, usually comes up pretty low. So 
you have really nice headphones, it tends to be a little bit harder to hear things. But for the price, given what it is, it's not the worst thing in the world, um, if you ask me. Um, that's not the worst problem in the world to have when it comes to these devices. Um, gear and equipment. Uh, I'm going to briefly talk about mobile equipment, iPhone, Androids, other mobile phones, iPads, tablets, and stuff like that. Um, one of the good things about this is everybody has one. So when you're talking to people and you want to be able to have them, for example, a lot of things that we're going to focus on here is external participants or themselves while you talk to them, however you want to talk to the phone, Skype, through Zoom, go to meeting, whatever you use. Um, I feel like that's one of the best ways to get good audio is to have a recorder in the room with the person. Obviously, you're not always dealing with audio experts, so keeping it simple for them is the best thing, I think, to do. Um, so even if they don't have a studio setup, even if they don't have a computer, they can use their mobile phone, and that's going to give you, in theory, a better option for audio than if you just record audio over Google Hangouts, Skype, Facebook, Messenger or any of those other sources. Um, the quality on these things, and the reason I brought this up is because the quality of things are actually really good. I had uh, a couple years ago while working at iHeart, we had a power outage in the building. We were in the middle of doing uh, some traffic reports and I grabbed my iPhone, took my traffic reporter into the studio, hit record on it, and I read traffic report right from the thing, right into the phone, trimmed the ends, emailed it from the phone to the station that we were going to send audio to. And they had no idea that it even came from an iPhone. Um, I played it back for my boss later that day, and he thought I lied to him that I recorded it in the studio. And that's how good these things can be given optimal situations. Uh, so like I said, qualities have come really a long way. Um, and just to prove how great the quality has been, this is a uh, podcast I recorded with a feminist hardcore band, War on Women. Uh, it was recorded backstage at the Sinclair here in Boston in the middle of a concert. So 20 feet outside of the door that we, of the room we were in, was just loud playing. How bands. did you even get into that in the first place? Um, Cause I that's, that, that's a, not something you just fall into by accident. No, I mean, no, I have, um, I have a degree in computer science. Um, I've been doing computer programming and database stuff uh, for probably for, uh, professionally for about 15 years. And before that I started screwing see, around with computers. I'm going to play the whole thing about that, but. I think for as a podcast, amazing quality. We just held the iPhone in our hand, passed it back and forth, and just held and talked into it just like a microphone. Um, there was a little bit of cleanup, a little bit of noise reduction, and a little bit of graphic equalizing. But for the most part, uh, it's probably I probably say that audio you heard ninety percent of that is how it came out of the phone. There was a little bit of cleanup, a little bit of compressing uh, levels and, and normalizing. But for the most part. There wasn't much done to make it sound good and legible. So even in this day and age, if you're having somebody record themselves and you're having conversation with them through a different name, you get a different medium, if they just take out their phone and record it um, or an old phone or anything like that, it's not going to sound the worst in the world. Um, and just to show you how far quality comes, this is one of my favorite things to watch. Um, and we, again, I won't show you the whole thing, but um, in 2010, uh, a band called Atomic Tom recorded a live performance on a New York subway um, because on all basically playing iPhones, recording iPhones and video. Everything yeah, I want. This is 10 years ago. 11 years ago, this was impossible to do. 10 years ago, they did it. It sounds good. And in this day, it sounds a thousand times. So if you're worried about you know, coming off as not professional by saying, hey, could you, during our conversation, record yourself with your iPhone and send me that file? Um, you can alleviate all of those worries because the equipment, um, the, the quality of these devices are amazing in this day and age, in my opinion. <laughs>
Um, all right, the conversation of apps and softwares. Um, so, Dennis, if you're if we're gonna ask somebody to record with their iPhone, what what app do they have to download? How much is this gonna cost them? Are there free alternatives? Yes, there's total free alternatives. Uh, the story that I just brought up about recording my uh, recording news reports, uh, traffic reports, and sending them by email, I did it with voice memos. Um, I do stand up comedy and I record uh, every single night I do comedy. I record with just the native voice memos app. It works, it sounds good. Obviously, uh, so the closer that you get to the source, the better it sounds. Um, another good app that I've used over the years just to record conversations uh, is Rev. Um, Rev does recording, um, both audio, and yeah. also they do some transcription service. I've never used them for that, but I've used it just to record a phone call. Um, I've recorded, uh, you know, called somebody, did an interview with them, and used the audio to come back to listen to it. And I've put it on my own podcast too. So even with the device, just with an iPhone itself, I've been able to do, do a re to interview somebody, talk to them, record their audio, my audio. And put it, clean it up, and put it on there. Um, one of the other apps that are out there is, uh, and I have used this one. The only reason I've used it is because it works on the Apple Watch, so I, that's why I've downloaded it, and it's fine. It's a little more advanced. Um, it allows you to do AAC, MP3s, and WAV formats, um, which is nice and convenient and handy. You don't have to convert any of the files to it. Uh, so Voice Recorder Pro, um, I think it's seven bucks in the App Store. If you record a lot of audio, worth the seven dollars. Um, and I think it is also iOS only. Yeah, that is only for the iPhone. And then um, I have never used RecForge two, but I have friends who have Android phones who have used it, and they swear by it. Um, again, it gives you the ability to convert to several different formats, including WAV, MP3. Which, outside of those two, is there any other necessary need for any other file format? Everything pretty much takes those two, and they are their most of the standards. All right, record, uh, computer recording software. Uh, most of what I'm going to talk about here is not necessary for us, but software for us to recommend to people when recording themselves. Um, in my opinion, what we need to do with them is make it free, make it easy, and comfortable to use. Um, one of the first things of that is I use it myself every day for my own stuff at home, um, and that's Audacity. It's free. It works on multiple platforms. It works on um, on Windows. It works on Macs. It works on Linux. If you know anybody who's using Red Hat software, uh, Red Hat operating systems, um, the noise reduction on that is good, but not great. There's amazing a lot of great plugins that will work for it as well uh, that are better than the native ones. But the native noise reduction software inside of it and the graphic equalizers are pretty intuitive to use. However, when we're recommending people to download this on their computer for them to record themselves with, they don't have the necessary need to do noise reduction or cleaning or editing. All we want them to be able to do is easily download a piece of software with a couple clicks, get themselves recording at a good level, and be able to send that file to us. Audacity, I think, that's all of those things out of the park. Um, of course, a lot of people still, regardless, have a, uh, access to Adobe products, including Audition, which is, I think, one of the best editing digital audio workstation editing softwares out there. Um, I've been using it for 20-plus years back when it was Cool Edit. Um, <clears throat> and it's what I've used for working with when I've been hired to work at places. Excuse me. <clears throat> we all know how coronavirus grew. The internet. Anyway, um, some people have it. Some people are already using it. Even if they're not professionals, they have access to it. So it behooves us to be able to know about it and familiar with it if you have access to it. Of course, another free software uh, that is only for Macs that a lot of people have because a lot of people have Macs is GarageBand. So um, Pro Tools is another uh, software that a lot of people are already using. Um, now, here's a good one to talk about. And um, Sorry, Reaper is another audio program. I have never used it. I have had friends who have used it. They say it's very intuitive and very easy for people to use. So um, and the point of all of these softwares is, again, making it convenient and easy for other people who are not 
experts like us in the industry. But what's important is that we familiarize ourselves with these as well. So it's one thing to say, hey, Audacity is great and easy to use. And then when you go, well, how do I do this? And go, oh, actually, I've never used it, but I'm, I hear it's easy to use. No, it's important for us to also familiarize ourselves because one of the best ways to make talent comfortable is in having them instilled with trust from us. So a great way of being uh, of, of instilling trust is when they have a question about something, you're able to answer it. So making yourself familiar with just the basics of these programs when asking people to record themselves just so you can walk them through it is, I think, very key and imperative. Um, and then uh, one of the uh, last ones that we're going to talk about um, is a really good piece of software that allows you to record somebody remotely in high quality audio. It's called Zencaster. Um, I have a lot of friends who use it uh, and they swear by it. So basically it's software that you download on your computer and all you do is you send out a browser link when you want to meet and record with somebody, uh, not meet, but when you want to record with somebody over the internet, sends them a link. It allows them to easily get right into the recording. You control the, all of it. And then when you're done, you get separate individual audio tracks of you and your guest that you can then sync up and manipulate any, and edit any way you need to. Um, so record, it allows you to record remote interviews in stu with studio, they say studio quality, high quality audio. Um, one of the good things about this, there's two, there's only two levels of pricing that I saw. Uh, there's free, which allows you to record yourself and uh, two other people. So if you need to talk to two, you know, if you need to have an interview of three people, you and two others, free account gets you there. You record up to eight hours per month. Um, and it's done in MP3 format for the free pricing, which in this day and age is actually a really great, good compressor. And I think if you record in MP3 format, there's less loss in uh, quality as opposed to taking a file and compressing it. And again, compressors these days, uh, compressing software these days is really good. And I'm not, I don't oppose to MP3. Usually uh, when I record myself, I record in wave um, and then I compress it down to um, an MP3 and a um, mono file. That way I can keep file size down that's how I upload my stuff, and nobody knows the difference. Um, if you're curious, the other pricing is $10 a month. It gives you unlimited guests, unlimited recordings, and allows you to record in WAV format if those features are what you require. Um, and lastly, somebody told me about painting, and I've used these before, but not a lot. Uh, Isotope uh, makes really great plugins for pretty much every digital audio workstation out there, um, and they work really well for... Um, sweetening up audio, adjusting graphical equalization, um, and the noise reduction software is very good and works very well. So I'm not going to talk too much about how to clean up audio here because uh, in my experience, it's a case-by-case -case basis. There is no blanket statement of what works. Sometimes noise reduction software, if you can get the right clip, you can filter that out easily. Sometimes you have to go through graphic equalizers and just find that annoying sound that what what kilohertz that annoying sound is and bring it down or bring it up or do whatever you have to do. Sometimes I've had to go in spectrum equalizers and just erase certain things. So there's no, unfortunately, no one fix for everything out there. It's really a case-by-case -case basis. And, um, even in this day and age when I still, you know, when I have to fix something up, either if it's what, something for me or for a friend, sometimes it's just hours of hours of testing and trying and seeing different ways of make, what's going to make it. Uh, what's going to clean this up the best way? So, um, setups and best practices. Uh, so one of the first things we're going to talk about setup, as I briefly touched on it earlier, uh, it's mix minuses. So, what is a mix minus? Because a lot of people are very confused by it uh, when we talk about it in engineering and when we're talking about it in builds and stuff like that. So, uh, basically, a mix minus is sending multiple audio signals to an external participant without that participant hearing themselves. So you're sending them the mix minus themselves. Um, requirements for something like this is obviously you need a mixer. So if you're doing, if you already have a mixer at home or you're thinking about purchasing some type of multi-track mixing device um, or mixer or multi-track recording device, you're going to need that. 
and it also needs to have an auxiliary output. Um, I found this picture from jkaudio.com, um, which is a really good picture of what a mix minus setup looks like. Um, let me grab my laser pointer here and we'll go over briefly what it is. Okay. So here's a great example of a mix minus setup. For example, let's say you and a co-host are interviewing somebody over the phone. You want to be able to record that conversation. You want everybody to be able to hear each other well. So what's going to happen is this is your mixing console. Obviously, your microphones are going to plug into your inputs like normal. You're also going to need a phone interface. Well, what's a phone interface? Telos makes those. They're very expensive. We don't need one of those. Um, product I talked about earlier, the iRig 2. This device right here is a... For all intents and purposes, what we're going to be using for is a phone interface. So it allows you to plug easily into your phone and send and retrieve audio from it. So let's say instead of phone interface here, we're going to use the we're going to pretend that says iRig 2. So what's going to happen? We're going to plug our phone into the iRig 2. We're going to take the audio outputs and plug that into any other channel of the mixer. But instead of sending the main out, which will be going to your computer your PS system, your recorder, whatever. You're actually going to send them an auxiliary output of audio. And you're going to bring up the auxiliary outputs for the channels that you want to send, i.e. microphone one, microphone two. And the person on the phone only hears what's coming out of the auxiliary outputs, which will be mic one and mic two. If you have other setups that you need to send them, like you know, you're playing audio clips on them here, obviously that needs to be brought up as well. That is a lot more advanced. Um, but what's ha happening is, is you're still keeping the main volume down here for the caller. You're only sending them auxiliary audio. You're not going to send them the main mix. So again, you're sending them the mix of audio minus their own self. So, and that's a mix minus setup. Hopefully I explained that well and everybody understands it. Because... Um, Recording people from externally, uh, even if they're not going to if they're not going to record their stuff, if you're only going to record the audio as it's happening, mix minus setup um, is the way to make that happen. So um, now, outside of hooking up a mixer, uh, this is a mobile iRig. This is a mobile iRig two phone interface thing that I have done over the years. Um, not over the years. I've done it once or twice for it. Um, so just to show you what, I mean, there's a lot of wires. It can be complicated. Uh, basically, we have a microphone going into the recorder. We have the headphone output going into a mixer. And the mixer is going to a headphone, a headphone amplifier. So you can listen to the microphone inputs, the phone input, which is also going to channel two of this phone. That way you can listen to it in your own earphones. Way you're sitting there and you're hearing, you're hearing your microphone, you're hearing your caller, which in this case we're using an old iPad as a stand-in for a phone because I had to take the picture somehow. Um, so there's just another variation of the setup. So, all right. Best practices. Um, so this is more best practices. Thing. Here are things that you should keep in mind when recording. The most important thing beyond anything else is quality of story matters more than audio quality. If they can be heard, if it's uh, it may not be the best audio in the world, but if it's a compelling story and a good interview, people are going to listen and they will forgive less than perfect audio. Content matters. Also, what's one of the things to keep in mind is always make your subject, whomever it is you are recording, make them comfortable. Ways to make them comfortable is not overwhelming them with too many details. Not going through, I mean, Mike, we all know Mike, good mic production, 45 45. Um, you're, you can tell that to people when I find out when you, when you start telling them where to put microphones and where to put on headphones and how to listen to things and where if it gets too overly complicated, they get confused, they get nervous, and it makes things 
Um, it does not allow for a good interview. So making them comfortable, making as much of a stress-free environment for them to be able to record themselves or talk to you or however is one of the most important things that you should know. You can't always fix it in post, but sometimes you can fix it in post. Even if the audio quality recorded is not the best quality in the world, there's ways of cleaning it up. There's always some ways to fix it and improve it for the most part. You can only polish a turd so far because it's still going to be a turd afterward. But if it's a, if it just needs a little bit of sweetening, if they're a little bit off mic, if the volumes are a little bit off, you can fix it. It's not going to be that detrimental of a situation. Um, obviously, we want at all times to put the best quality in at the beginning because we know that's going to be the best quality on the end with less work. So, but if they think it's not going to be ideal, that's fine. It's okay. Again, quality is what matters. If you need to fix it a little bit, you can. There's always that option. That laser pointer off. Um, and one of the questions that somebody asked me is about when we're recording somebody over the internet, conversation-wise, however it may be, um, what do we do about fixing um, slow internet or if it sounds bad because you know of low internet quality one of the things you can do is disable video if you're using if you're using a video service like skype which i've recorded audio i've recorded interviews through skype and it's it's garbage i do not recommend using it at all if it's all that you have access to go for it but their audio quality and their bit rate streaming is just not good it's fine for talking to people but when you know if you want to use it as a way to communicate with somebody and they're going to record on their end, that's great. That's fine. But um, there's much better uh, software we'll talk about in a moment. Nope. Because we'll talk about that now because apparently I forgot to make that slide. Ha <laughs> ha. I had all day and I still forgot it. Um, so other good software that is out there for recording. Oh, well, we talked about that earlier. Zencaster, right? Yes. Well, I didn't forget him. I just talked about it earlier. Uh, all right, so good resources out there for um, product interviews or product reviews, rather. Um, one of my favorite is Curtis Judd. Uh, he has a YouTube channel. It's uh, learnlightandsound.com. He goes. He's a professional freelance um, audio recorder and sound engineer, and he makes one to two videos a week of just reviewing gear and best practices on how to use things. So highly recommend watching all his videos. Um, Film Riot, they do, obviously it's a channel for low budget filmmakers, but they do a lot of really good product reviews for audio stuff and talking about good ways to get audio. They have a lot of really good videos about um, capturing audio on set, out in the field and stuff like that, and product reviews. Uh, same thing with Indie Mogul. Uh, again, it's another film channel, but they do a lot of reviews on that, um, on, on those things. Uh, I will leave links to these in the chat. Um, see if I can do that right now. Um, a friend of mine's brother just wrote a really good audio call called Dealing with, the, Dealing with the Coronavirus, How I Teach Remote Lectures by Pat DeMarl. It is a really good read, and he touched on a lot of the subjects that I was going to talk about anyway when I read it, and I was thinking about this. So it is a good place to read this page. Um, it is a good, good resource to read when talking about a lot of this stuff. Um, my good friend, uh, Matt Bogart, just sent me a link today when we were talking about some of these things of a video he sends to people uh, when he's doing remote, uh, when he's doing uh, remote recordings, talking to people saying, hey, watch this video. It will let you know everything you need to do about recording with your iPhone. Um, it's made by Aspen Public Radio. I've watched it, and it's a really good video. And let people know about, uh, especially if you're going to record with them uh, remotely, it is a good resource to have and tell them about it. Um, and, of course, if you guys ever want, you're always welcome to ask me. Your uh, Find me on the internet, Facebook, whatever. You can send me a message there, or you can email me, Dennis at dead or Dennis .com. Um, I will do everything I can to help people when they have questions about what to do going into something, maybe ways to fix audio files, stuff like that. So, 
That is all I have to say. We'll open the floor to you guys for answer any questions that you may have about any things I've touched about, scenarios that you have, um, and stuff that you're interested in figuring out. Anyone wants to ask a question, you feel free to unmute yourself and ask, or you can ask in the chat. Oh, and it looks like there's only Robert and Steve left in the group. I kept hearing beeps in and out, so I wasn't sure if people, how many people were actually in here while I was doing the presentation. So, um, Steve, Robert, if you guys have a question, more than welcome to answer it. If not, um, any tips on Wi-Fi stab uh, uh, Wi-Fi stabilization or boosting? Unfortunately, there's not much we can do about improving someone else's internet capabilities. Uh, so there is no answer on that. Uh, what I can tell you is to not be embarrassed if there is, uh, you know, if, if the Wi-Fi drops out, ask them to repeat themselves. You know, if you it, do not be afraid to say, hey, I just want to make sure we have it. If you can just repeat that last couple sentences again, or, hey, we lost you for a little bit, if you can just repeat. So that's the only thing I can tell you, because unfortunately, we can't go to people's houses and improve their internet connect connectivity. Um, I mean, ways to improve your own internet connectivity is get better Wi-Fi routers, um, connect to internet directly by Ethernet, by cable. Um, of course, you can always get, um, if, you're, if you're going over Wi-Fi and your Wi-Fi signal is, in your particular place is um, sucks balls, you can still use, uh, you can get, they're, they only go for about 25, 30 bucks a piece. Um, it's just Wi-Fi repeaters. They're as easy as, you know, a little bit of software setup plug it right into a socket in the wall and it extends your Wi-Fi. So if internet is an issue on your end, that is one of the things I use one in my house right now um, to improve the internet quality for my, one of my roommates. He, and since we've unplugged it, since we've had it, um, any streaming issues we have have gone down because we're not all using the same exact device. Um, and all I did took a few minutes from, I think uh, all I did is hold it to the vice, press a button, press a button on my router and wait a few seconds and it was up and running. And all I did was plug it right into the sock on the wall. So that's the only thing I can say about improving your own internet quality, but unfortunately there's not much you can do about improving someone else's internet quality. Sorry if that was disappointing. <laughs> that's okay. Sorry if that was the most disappointing answer. Well, thanks for doing this. Very helpful. Not a problem. And I did record it. So um, hopefully it goes, uh, I'll put it up uh, on the line as soon as I can. And hopefully uh, it's going to be more helpful and beneficial to other people. Uh, I may also just do this again, two or three times this week after work, just for other people to pop in and see the, see it and listen and ask questions. So Great. thanks for joining us, Steve and Robert and the other people that were here and then left. <laughs> well, th thanks again, Dennis. It's not a problem. Have a great night, everyone. And uh, I, I did this just in enough time to be able to watch, still watch The Walking Dead. All right. Enjoy. Let's hope that's not us. Thanks. Yeah, if I need that, I can just look outside, apparently. Take care. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>